Howdy, partner. Daniel Kramer for Trailers from Hell. And uh, today it's a Western with Marlon Brando. No, it's not One Eye Jacks. It's the other one. It's Sidney J. Fury's The Appaloosa, co-starring Anjanette Comer and John Saxon in what is the role of Saxon's career. And he even said so himself. Now, I'm the guy who literally wrote the book on Sidney J. Fury, and uh, the stories about the making of this film are legend even outside of the Fury circle. Uh, one that I'd like to tell you before you lose me to just a, a voiceover narration is that um, Brando would do various things to get out of shooting in the afternoon. Wh whatever he could do to not work, he was going to try it. So basically what would happen is after lunch, Brando would basically jut out. He would distend his belly um, and he'd unbutton his pants and he'd walk up to the crew members and, and up to Sydney and say, I can't work. See my pants. They don't fit anymore. That I can't get, I can't button my pants. I so I can't work. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then, uh, Sydney, God bless him said, okay, Marlon, um, we'll figure it out. You can go back to your trailer. Um, and, uh, we'll call you when we need you. And so he did. And, uh, what they did with the rest of the day is shoot with Brando's double from behind uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Brando had various, uh, exotic looking women, uh, according to someone I talked to who was there flown in, uh, very kind of unusual looking women flown in via helicopter to the movie set. And what Brando would do with them is anyone's guess, I guess. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, Sid made his day. He always made his days. And uh, the very next day, Brando would show up on the set and say, okay, where do you need me? And they would just get his close-ups for what they had shot with the double the, the day before. Um, so there are many more stories where that came from. So buckle up, or rather saddle up, as we hit the trail with the Appaloosa, Fury's follow-up to his hit, The Ipcris File. And this trailer promotes that aspect, which is very interesting. So here's the trailer. <laughs> When Sidney took the job directing the Appaloosa, he took a meeting with a belligerent Marlon Brando, who immediately launched into the conversation with, well, I'm doing this because it's in my contract. Why are you doing it? A stunned but earnest Sidney answered, because I really wanted to work with you. And that's not what the legendary actor wanted to hear. And he replied with, come on, come on, don't give me that shit. As Sidney himself told me, Brando seemed to have little sense of what high regard he was held in, nor did he care to know. For all intents and purposes, he was constitutionally checked out, indignant about being stuck under a dead-end contract with a studio he'd grown to hate, after some messy dealings in relation to his father's involvement with his production company, the company that co-produced Brando's first and last film as director, One-Eyed Jacks. His experience directing One-Eyed Jacks had also left him in a bad state of mind. It was still a fresh wound, Brando's role in the Appaloosa notwithstanding, it's unlikely you will find a film that's more visually daring and unusual, especially for its time. You won't see much of any of the most audacious images in this trailer, but Sidney had recently received international acclaim as a director with the artfully obfuscated images in his British masterpiece, The Ipcris File, the year before. Many young filmmakers just coming up at the time have related how the term Fury Angle was regularly used in conversation in this era. His style was known. He was the guy with the Kino eye, according to Francois Truffaut. Critics eventually grew to tire of it, an older generation famously headed up by Billy Wilder ridiculed it, while an upcoming generation was inspired by it. Director Philip Kaufman and cinematographer Vittoria Storaro were among those influenced. So with that in mind, the fact that this trailer plays up Fury's involvement can be placed into perspective here. By the way, I'm convinced that the Scorpion sequence in this film is one of the best set pieces of the 1960s, and I'm frankly surprised that no one has tried to imitate it by now. Contrary to a lot of controversial press constantly coming out of the production, Fury and Brando mostly got on and they established what you might call a modus vivendi, even when screenwriter James Bridges left the project. Yes, that's the James Bridges who would go on to direct The China Syndrome. But Sidney and Brando did have a few disagreements that got blown up by reporters. 
Sidney told me that he recalls looking up at Brando on his horse after a particular row. Out of frustration, he told him, Boy, you just don't give a shit about anybody, do you? Brando burst out laughing, got off the horse, and embraced Sidney. He liked that he was brave and forthright enough to call him on his antics. That was Brando. But yeah, the Appaloosa. You won't see another western like this one. I guarantee it.